All right, and we have it. <laughs> Did he mulligan once or twice? I think it was just one mulligan. John can handle one mulligan pretty well. Two gets a little bit rough because they're mana base sometimes. Whoa. No early plays for Jund. See a Siege Gang in his hand and Lightning Bolt. A few lands. Bloodbraid Elf. Hey there, guys. Mind if I join? Oh, yeah. We're being joined by Jared Silva. Hey, Judge Jared hey, Judge Silva. Judge How's it going, everyone? Great. Um, we just started. Uh, there was one mulligan. Alex. So. All the new fun cards that people are playing with, and we're winding up with Jund in the finals. Still ma manages to get there. But it's Jund versus American Gladiators. The, the, <laughs> the chat has themed it American Gladiators. And Rashad yeah. is going to do the, the jingle for us sometimes. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Actually, I've never watched that show. Uh -huh. Actually, I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was... Um, Laskin had an almost a, an identical mirror the last yeah. round, so regardless of what was ha of who won, this, this matchup was happening once Burton Zini took down and on Trazi. I think their main deck was spot on for the, the mirror match. Yep, a couple of side deck yep. choices. And Rashad. Soldier. Yep. You've been a soldier a lot today. Just the egg. The, the Easter egg. soldier? Yeah, the egg makes me a soldier. The egg also makes me a goblin, though. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get rid of that wall. That's probably best case scenario when your wall gets to soak up three damage and a lightning bolt. Sadly, it may have been the correct play. <laughs> yeah. We need to eventually start attacking Planeswalkers. And... Chose to Spreading Seas, Alex's only black source, even though there's two Raging Ravines on board. Uh, just one can... is Rootbound Crags, the other one. Oh, okay. Rootbound Crag, one Raging Ravine. But if he doesn't have any more black mana, it's going to shut off some of the removal spells. And lets you cascade into him. Yep. Or get your... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs black mana? Got to randomize the two cards. <laughs> Things have gone pretty smoothly from what we've observed for the rules. I think... The players in the mirror match were a little bit tired. It's just a long match, and they missed a yeah. couple of things at the very end. It's also, I, I would ex assume, a very tough match to play um, when you have two two decks that are that dedicated to beating aggro and they go up against each other. It becomes a completely different match than you've been playing all day long. Yep. Strategy completely changes when you're sharing it. Activates the overrun. Wants that Elspeth gone right now. No, he's attacking. He's attacking Lewis. Said you. With both. Yeah, he's huh. going for the throat. I mean, when when you're playing American Gladiators and you're trying to get the hoop into the ball, you don't you don't go through the American <laughs> Gladiator. You go around. <laughs> so fighting. Against the Planeswalkers, could yeah, be a losing proposition, is what we're saying. He'd be able to double block a Blood Braid, and Elspeth would still be on three, yeah. He almost has to force the overrun effect that turn.
Gideon takes out Blood Red Elf. He's like Saber. <laughs> uh, just, I'm just naming weapons of choice, and obviously that's the name of an American Gladiator, right? Uh, he is pretty good. He might be holding some sort of Saber. <laughs> so that pass got us back into black mana, and I think he had a Maelstrom Pulse. Mel, some pulse siege gang, maybe two siege gangs, yeah, two siege gangs. <laughs> That's pretty brutal to get rid of Gideon, Gideon and all the tokens for this turn. Maelstrom pulse still pretty good. Yeah, maybe even better now. For a while, they're running a lot more Shroud cards. A Wall of the Niles Man and Sphinx of Giles. Over there. Oh, yeah. Run it all. Let's continue the run of high dollar cards. <laughs> So, Broodmate Dragon was the card that he left on top when we activated Jace. You have to imagine that the jump player is not feeling great about that. It's not too often when your opponent wants you to have Broodmate. If he makes the correct prediction, he's going to assume that Lewis is holding some way to deal with the dragon effectively. So then maybe he waits for the dragon, or waits, waits for Lewis to play the answer before he plays the dragon. Hit rampant growth. Uh, yeah, rampant growth of blood red. Cascaded into a <laughs> full frame oh. card. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's got that same oval shape too as the yeah, unglued land. Yes. And now we're attacking Elspeth. Oh, we don't want it to go ultimate. Especially if he does actually have a Marshall too, which is what we're kind of predicting after the broodmate on top. <laughs> Squeezes his fist in, in anguish. Now that Elspeth's gonna go ultimate. Actually, it's pretty good for Alex. If he goes ultimate there, we can't deal with the tokens very easily for the rest of the game. Yeah, um, Jen has a hard time dealing with indestructible things. Yeah. Well, if he ultimated there, wouldn't have had any tokens in play, and the Elspeth would have dropped off the board after pulling the eight. So unless he had another way to start making tokens again. He, he's holding Marshall Coup, so eventually he's, he's going to have to play that Broodman out or something. He may have Day instead. I think he has both. Does he have both? Yeah. That puts him into a pretty good pretty good position right there. But now we can keep Elspeth from going an ultimate for a while now that we hit gotta play out our siege gangs from hand. Well you know what the counter spells too? Man. No, those are the sideboards. And Alex had been very cautious and waiting because he was expecting some sort of mass removal. So he 
patiently just held back the siege gang. Which made it way better timing than if he would have played it in the last two turns. Yeah. Also, after those paths, he's ramped up to enough mana that he's still able to effectively utilize the tokens. Yep. 